fragrance industry is massive. In the UK alone, we spent £1.6 billion on perfumes in 2020. The market is teeming with the latest new and on-trend products, which are endlessly pushed by celebrities and influencers on social media. Known as liquid gold, oud is one of the most expensive and sought-after ingredients in perfumes. With its origins in Middle Eastern culture and religion, this ingredient has recently taken the West by storm, and demand for oud and its price have skyrocketed. What makes oud so popular? Forget smelling like money, if you want to smell like a bank. And where does it come from? It feels terrible that it is because of our greed. It is almost extinct in the wild. So what actually is oud? Oud is an essential oil, which is extracted from the wooden chips of an aquilaria tree. But not just any aquilaria tree. The tree has to be infected with a certain fungus, which turns this usually pale wood into a dark, resinous fibre, also known as agar wood. The whole process can take up to 100 years in the wild. The agar wood is then fermented and distilled to create the distinct oud fragrance. Walid claims to be the number one oud seller in the UK. He sells a refined oud, which he infuses with other scents at his store in London. I'm in North London. I'm about to go meet Walid at Black Oud, who is hopefully going to tell me why Oud is so popular. I'm excited. Hey, Dan. Hello. How's it going? Hi, Walid, okay. right? Yeah, man. Thanks very How's much. It going? You ready for your oud experience? Yeah, go on, I'm yeah. excited. Grab a seat. Do you know anything about oud? Basically nothing. So I'm gonna give you a bit of an insight what oud is. So this here is pure oud. This little bottle here cost me 250 pounds. Oh my Let's God. Have a smell of this. You might not like it though. No? No. Oh. <laughs> oud is an acquired taste. It's not for everyone, but it's a lifestyle. How it works here at Black Oud is basically we will find out a bit about your lifestyle, what you do, where do you like to hang around, do you like to go out in the evenings, do you like to do dinners, are you a bit of a, you know, James Bond? Go on, let's do it, yeah, let's do it, find me my yeah. Oud. So this one here is called Oud Arabi. Let's give it a go. It's quite faint, it's quite like... Yeah, it's not, that's why it's called refined Oud compared to the other Oud. So totally they, different smell to Yeah, so this one is mixed with other ingredients. Have you been to Dubai before? No. Don't worry, I'm about to take you to Dubai. So this one here is called Emirati Oud. Forget smelling like money, if you want to smell like a bank. Oh, I like that. You like that, yeah? This so is kind of more like me. It's a bit of you. Yeah, a yes, bit of me. A bit of you, a bit of you. Yeah. We've got this one here. This one's called Oud Mukhallat. Mukhallat in Arabic means mixed. So this one's mixed Oud. This one smells like a Ferrari. That's my favourite so far. Yeah. These here are for people that go to certain places. They want to be known before they're entering the room. Yeah. So some fragrance is kind of like that. What sort of people come to Black Oud? So you got rappers, we've had talents, artists. I've met some footballers as well. So how was your Oud experience so far? Yeah, good. Interesting. Yeah, like whole the, new world. How about we uh, wrap it up with some uh, mint tea? So Dan, how are you finding the tea? It's nice. You like it, yeah? So how culturally significant is Oud? So basically, as Muslims, we are taught that the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, he used to love and adore perfume. So it comes from that angle. Even myself being half Arab, I grew up smelling this stuff. You know, my mum used to burn in the morning. I've been exposed to it from a very young age, but a lot of people that's, you know, recently maybe getting the opportunity to go to the Middle East, they're getting introduced to this culture. What do people think of that, that it's becoming more mainstream? I think it's a good thing, because then that way, it allows people to appreciate something that's always been there. As the owner of Black Oud, I make sure that people understand what Oud is. I don't want you just to come buy the product and leave. I want you to understand it, why you're wearing it, where does it come from. It's deeper than just selling fragrance. Really enjoyed my first Oud experience. It's really interesting to learn how a ancient Middle Eastern tradition has become so popular in the mainstream, but it has kind of made me think about where does oud really come from and how is it harvested and does that have an environmental impact?
I've learned that Aquilaria is a genus of subtropical forest trees, which are native to South and Southeast Asia. All species are listed on the IUCN Red List of Threatened Species. It's estimated that their population for the last three generations has declined by over 80%. Less than one in 10 trees are actually infected with agar wood, and there are no obvious external signs that a tree contains it. The search for agar wood has resulted in indiscriminate felling of trees, a dramatic decline in wild populations and huge damage to the ecosystems which these trees help support. All species are currently protected under international law, meaning their imports and exports are monitored to ensure their numbers stay stable. However, the value of oud is so high that the illegal felling of wild populations continues to put aquilaria trees under threat in all countries where they occur. I'm about to meet Supriyo, who's based in Assam, India. Once a stronghold for wild aquilaria trees, their numbers have plummeted in recent years. Fortunately, he and the Indian government are working towards some ingenious solutions to revive their populations and create a more sustainable trade for the future. Hello, my name is Supriyo Sen. I'm working as assistant professor in the Department of Biosciences, Assam Don Bosco University. Presently, I'm standing in front of the agar root plantations, which you can see right behind me. So this project is about uh, making a consortium of microorganisms that would lead to increasing the yield of agar root. Hi, Supriya, how's it going? Yeah, hi, I'm fine. How are you? Good, thanks. So how many Aguilaria trees are left in the wild in your region? Uh, there aren't left any. Actually, it is almost extinct in the wild. And the few that are there are in the uh, reserve forests mm. under the supervision of the government. It feels terrible that it is because of our greed that we have lost the resource. It's a bioresource. With it going extinct in some areas, I was just, I know some people would think that if the ingredient is primarily used for perfumery, it's not an essential yeah. thing for a species that's. Yeah you know, critically endangered in lots of its range. Do you think that potentially it should be banned? I mean, it's a valuable bioresource. Many people's livelihoods are dependent on agar wood. And there is possibility to carry it out as plantations. If we are able to protect the uh, trees in wild and replenish the wild populations, then I think... Uh, the trade should be incentivized, actually. That's interesting. So you think that if the trade is incentivized, then it actually yeah. might increase the chances of it surviving in the wild? Exactly. At Assam Don Bosco University, Suprio and his team have been developing the technology to make agar wood production more efficient. By using microorganisms to feed on agar wood chips, they're able to speed up the fermentation process, which produces more oil in less time and more importantly, requires less wood. In Assam, they've also begun to introduce the fungus to cultivated tree populations. By guaranteeing an infection, they fell fewer trees and can expand their production to new areas. The Indian government have found another way of conserving this species through homesteads. What are the benefits of homesteads? Usually in rural areas, people have some land, right? Uh, just adjoining one's home where you, you can have a mango tree or a, a, a fruit plant near your home. So likewise, there can be agarud plantation also. And the incentive comes if there is a trade, if the homestead garden owner, he's able to sell his tree and get some money for his uh, family livelihood. It is also a uh, place for conservation. Agarud is not only about the species diversity of the tree, Agarud is infected by an insect that needs to be conserved. It is mm -hmm. infected by fungus, which leads to agarud formation. That also needs to be conserved. So here in the UK, yeah, that's right. that's gardens are like critically yeah. important for so many different birds, hedgehogs, hot foxes, exactly. so many different animals. And it just seems that you, you guys over there have exactly the same importance. Very true, yes. 
Exactly, exactly, yeah. What are your hopes for the future of Oud, Argo Words in this industry? I feel very proud that uh, we have been able to uh, be create certain amount of impact. We want to see Agar Road from Assam to be something like Assam tea, which is known globally as uh, as premium quality things and not certainly something to deal with deforestation. I'm very hopeful about the future. Well, thanks so much, Supriya. Food is an important cultural ingredient which has been used and enjoyed around the world for hundreds of years. It's amazing to see its popularity grow and to reach more people than ever before. But this trade has real issues. The way it's harvested and the devastating impact this has on its native trees and forests is not sustainable. If we don't do something, this tree could become extinct in the wild for good. If we want to continue enjoying oud, we need a sustainable trade in it. And in doing so, protect the communities, forests and ecosystems which depend on it.